there can be no rational debate about whether this president has lied to you. More than we have ever tracked since tracking began. That is the case. The argument to make is how those around him enable and therefore own the same behavior. Exhibit A is, of course, his campaign press secretary from last night. You don't think this York? president has lied to the finish, American Chris. people? No, you I don't have to think answer the that question first. Has lied. He has I don't never think the lied to the American lied. people. No, I don't Kayleigh think McEnany, the president your credibility lied. will be shot I think with my CNN audience if you don't back off American that statement. P- and I was right. Now, we know what's happening here. She's saying that President Trump isn't lying when he says he's already built the wall. When he says Muslim people cheered in the streets of New Jersey after 9/11. When he says his dad was born in Germany. Uh, when he says a dozen other things, all for Gazy. What's their playbook? Give no ground, deny any lie. And that move is now shared by too many who work for you and those who say they uphold conservative values, like this man. I'm not asking you why they I don't, lie. I can't look inside. I'm asking you to condemn them for lying because they shouldn't lie to the American people. I'm not going to condemn them for lying. I don't know, I have any idea why there was why he didn't go to that meeting. I have no idea. Yeah, but you know that they lied about the reason that he didn't why, go. Why, why do I get to be the person that determines whether someone who else speaks is lying or not? He asked the right question. Because each and all of us are, especially if you're in the punditry game of constantly judging your opponents on that basis. But you all have to make that call, all right? Because it's not just okay to call out lying when it's one of your opponents. And if they don't outright deny a lie, they will pretend the lie was something less. Look at this. I don't think they're lies, said this press secretary. I think the president communicates in a way that some people, especially the media, aren't necessarily comfortable with. A lot of times they take him so literally. I know people will roll their eyes if I say he was just kidding or was speaking in hypotheticals, but sometimes he is. Maybe sometimes he is. Sometimes he's lying. And your job is not to make that okay, because your job is technically to the American people, and that's your responsibility. So you can say, oh, it's a joke. He says migrants are mostly murderers and bad hombres, ha, 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 and then puts kids in cages. It's a joke when he talks about shutting the border, ha, ha, and then puts all these rules in that effectively do just that. It's a joke when he says he believes Putin over his own intelligence agencies on the world stage. You get the point. And once it's okay to deny a lie or say it's something else, it was only a matter of time before the cover-up would get more profound. It's not that he's lying. It's that there's no such thing as truth. And this from the president's attorney. If fact counting is anything, we've never had anybody with the level of mendacity that he has. (laughs) Not even close. But we'll leave it there. It's in the eye of the beholder. No, facts are not in the eye of the (laughs) beholder. You're always welcome here to argue the case. Nowadays, they are. No, nowadays, some want them to be. But no, because when you can't explain what people can see and hear, what happens next? Now you start to attack the people who expose the truth to them. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Don't believe your lion eyes straight out of a dystopian fever dream, literally ripped from the prophetic pages of Orwell's 1984. You remember this line? The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Politicians used to talk about the two Americas, right? Haves and have nots. My father did it until his last day. There are two Americas in this era as well. The true believers and everybody else. And those are some intractable groups. It's why President Trump's approval ratings never get above 50 and never go below about 35%. But this kind of time spent on division is withering. To you who deserve better, certainly, even those who have to defend it, look at Scaramucci. How many others will there be? Not sure. How many will do what he did, or what General Mattis just seemed to do subtly in his new book? Or how many will do the opposite, hold on, even double down as the divisiveness kind of creates a near delirium? Just be clear what this is about. It's not about petty gotchas. It's not about pitting one side against the other. It's not about playing to advantage. And don't ever cheapen it by saying it's about personal animus animus towards this president. This is about something much more basic, 
holding power to account for what it says and does to and for the American people, period. And whether it's one or two terms, this presidency will be long remembered, and each and all of us will have to answer for what we did and said during this time. One simple question that will mean everything. How will you be remembered?